All right, folks. So since we lost uh, a day on Thursday, um, where I normally would have had you work through this chain rule boot camp, um, we unfortunately won't have time in class to do it, but instead I'm gonna work through these um, in real time. Um, I certainly encourage you to take the time before you watch this video to attempt all of these questions on your own. Um, and if you get stuck on something or if you wanna confirm an answer, then watch. Um, but yeah, well, I'm just going to go through um, all of these one by one at a time and see what I get. So, um, for example, 10, find the derivative of g to the x or g of x. Okay, so what I have here is a polynomial plugged into a fifth power, right? So I have my inner function here, and my outer function is sort of raising to the fifth power. So if I want the derivative, g prime. I'm going to first take the derivative of the outermost function. So something to the fifth becomes five something raised to the fourth. And the something inside we don't touch. So that is x cubed plus 2x squared minus 1. And now to complete the chain rule, I multiply by the derivative of the inner function. So in this case, the inner function is just the polynomial inside. So x cubed becomes 3x squared. 2x squared becomes 4x, uh, and the 1 becomes a 0. So that's it. Uh, and that's my derivative. Boom, done. Okay. So moving on to the next one, find the derivative of k of r. Uh, so here, my inner function is going to be this uh, sort of polynomial, this linear function, 1 minus 2r, and the outer function is while well, I'm taking that whole thing, you know, uh, square rooting it. So, you know, what I could do uh, to make this easier to look at perhaps is re realize that this is one minus two R raised to the one half power. Okay, so now K prime of R, the derivative should be, again, derivative of the outer. So I'm starting with the outermost function, that's the square root. So I'm bringing the one half out in front and then subtracting one from the exponent, that's minus one half as the exponent, and I don't touch the inside, right? I don't touch the inside function, I plug it right back in, times, now the derivative of the inner function. So the derivative of one minus two r, that's uh, just minus two, because the one goes to zero, minus two r becomes minus two. And this one actually I notice I can simplify. So this is minus one over uh, one minus two r to the one half, or that's square root, right? Um, how did I do that, right? I noticed the two and the one, oh, one half canceled. And so I have just minus one left over. Okay, cool. Um, ooh, find the derivative of this. Well, okay, immediately I see this is, this is quite sort of complicated looking. So I'm, I'm actually gonna rewrite the sine squared. Uh, I'm gonna write that as sine of, okay, well, this is e to the tan of x. And I'm just remembering that sine squared really means the whole thing squared, okay? So I'm just rewriting that so it's a little easier to see what's the inner and outer functions. So here we have a bunch of nested things, right? So the outermost layer is the squaring, the next layer is sine, and then the next layer is like the E function, and then inside of that is the tan function. So, you know, sometimes students are not really sure like what the order of all these things are, so the way I'm confident about this, you could also do it in reverse. Maybe it's easier in reverse. Start with the x. And first you do the tan to that. And then that you do e to the x of that. And then you do sine of that. And then you do squaring to that, right? So it's sometimes easier to think inside to out when you're trying to figure out what comes first and what comes last. Um, okay, but this is gonna take several. So this is like four functions, right? So I have to be very careful about applying my chain rule. Here we go. So I'm starting with the outermost function. So something squared becomes two times the stuff inside raised to the first power. So I don't touch the stuff inside. Okay, times, so the square is done, right? So I've dealt with the, the squaring part. The next layer was the sine function. So I'm going to take the derivative of sine as cosine of, and again, the stuff inside you don't touch, you leave it alone. So that's e to the tan of x. Okay, so now 
my sine function is done, times next layer. So I need to do the derivative of e to the something, and that's just e to the something, right? So the derivative of e is just itself. So e to the tan of x stays by itself, right? That's the little confusing one. Whenever you see chain rules with e to the x, it looks a little confusing. Um, but could be, really, what I'm writing here, right, this is the derivative, right? e to the x becomes itself. So that, that's where it's a little bit confusing. So that's the next layer done times last layer. Uh, the innermost thing was the tangent. So I'm going to take the derivative of tangent, which is secant squared of x. OK, boom, done. This one a little trickier, right, with four layers sort of written in a complicated way. OK, moving on. Find the derivative of this f of x. Uh, so, you know, it looks like there's there's two ways you might approach this. Um, when I look at this, you might see this as a quotient rule, uh, and that's totally legitimate. You could do this as a quotient rule because uh, I have a numerator denominator, and I could do you know low d high minus high d low, etc. But uh, I actually notice I could rewrite this as one plus secant of x all raised to the negative two power. And now when I write it like this, uh, I can use the chain rule. Uh, and it's a little bit easier, I think, than using the quotient rule. So I'm going to go ahead and write it like this. And now applying the chain rule, f prime of x equals, OK, good. Inner function is the one plus secant, right? That's like the first thing. And then the outer function is the negative two power. So starting with the outermost thing, minus two times whatever to the minus three, right? Power rule. And the stuff inside doesn't change. So it's just one plus secant x times the derivative of the inside. So what's the derivative of the inner function? So the one becomes a zero and the secant becomes secant x tangent x. That's using my trig derivative rules. Okay, Boom, that one's done. Last few, find the derivative of this f of t. Well, now this is a little more complicated. Um, I think I should use quotient rule. I don't, it doesn't look like writing this differently will really help a, a whole lot. Uh, but okay, let's, that's fine. So first I'm gonna use the quotient rule. So this is a quotient. Looks like there maybe is a chain rule hidden inside the denominator though, right? When I have to take the denominator, Derivative, that might become a chain rule. Okay, so f prime becomes, so I have low times d high minus high times d low all over low squared. So Oh, okay, I'll write it as square root quantity squared first, but that's going to cancel, right? The square root and the square will cancel each other out. Okay, so what do I get here? So I get equals square root of t squared plus one times the derivative of sine is cosine of t minus sine of t times, and now I need the derivative of the square root of t squared plus one. So again, it might be easier to think about this as t squared plus one raised to the one half power. And now we see it is a chain rule here, right? So this is a quotient rule with a chain rule hidden inside. And to do the chain rule here, I need to first start with the power rule. That's the outer function. So I'm gonna get one half pulls in front, blah to the minus one half. And the stuff inside doesn't change, so I leave that alone times the derivative of the inside. So what's the derivative of the inside function? So I have a t squared plus one, t squared becomes two t, one becomes zero, so that's it. All of this divided by uh, t squared plus one. I'm, I'm gonna cancel the square root and the square. Okay, and honestly, I think that's good for now. I mean, okay, you can cancel the twos if you wanna cancel the twos. I see some factors of t squared plus one you can maybe mess around with, but you know, let's leave the algebra for now and just focus on taking the derivative. So that's where I would stop for now. That's a derivative. Okay. And the last one, is this the last one? It is the last one. 
So find the derivative of y equals cosine of one minus e to the two x over one plus e to the x. Yeah, this is the most challenging one for sure. Um, so what is, what is happening here? Well, there's a quotient certainly, but it's like a quotient plugged into a cosine. So when I think about this, right, at the outermost layer, this really is a chain rule, right? It's cosine, oops, cosine of something. So I should start this by doing a chain rule. Y prime equals, so the derivative of the outermost function is the derivative of cosine. So that's minus sine of, and then I, I don't touch the stuff inside, right? Don't touch it. One minus e to the two x over one plus e to the x times. Now, let me just kind of write it out, right? Like I'm going to take the derivative of the stuff inside. But now the, taking the derivative of the stuff inside is a little complicated, right? How do I take the derivative of the stuff inside? Well, to do that, it's not just like a simple power rule or something. I actually have to use the quotient rule to do that, OK? So take a second to make sure that makes sense to you, right? This is a chain rule, but the inner function of my chain rule requires a quotient rule in, in order to solve, OK? So this is minus sine of, OK, all this stuff doesn't change times, okay, let's do my quotient rule. So low d high, let's write it out, e dx of one minus e to the two x minus high d low all over low squared. Okay. And let's simplify some of those inner derivatives now. So this, I mean, just gets copied and pasted. Minus sine of one minus e to the two x over one plus e to the x times, okay, so I'm just copying a lot of this, one plus e to the x times. Now I need the derivative of one minus e to the two x. Aha, but this is where it gets kind of funny, right? What's the derivative of e to the two x? That is a chain rule again, right? There's an outer function e to this x, but plugged into that is a two x. So this is gonna require a chain rule again, right? It's not just e to the x, it's e to the something x. So I need a chain rule. Maybe I'll do this on the side of my paper, right? Maybe I don't wanna clutter up my work down here so, so much. So what is the derivative of e to the two x? Well. The outer function is e, right? Because again, if you want to work backwards, I start with an x, then multiply by two, and then raise that whole thing e to the whatever. So the outermost function is e to the blah. So I'm going to start with the derivative of the outermost, don't touch the inside, times the derivative of the inner function, 2x becomes 2. So the derivative of e to the 2x should be 2e to the 2x. OK, good. That's helpful. Now, when I'm down here again, what's the derivative of one? Well, that's just zero minus e to the two x. We said the derivative was two e to the two x minus one minus e to the two x times derivative of one becomes zero, e to the x becomes e to the x, good, all over one plus e to the x squared. And that's it. All my derivatives are done, right? There's no more derivatives to take. So I will say this is a final answer. OK, this is, of course, the most difficult one. I sort of increase them in difficulty from top to bottom. Uh, but I, I really like this one because you can see uh, how it was nested was kind of interesting, I think, right? The outermost part of the derivative is a chain rule, right? Sine of something times the derivative of the inside. But that inner function was a quotient rule, right? Because this is something divided by something. So I use a quotient rule. And within that quotient rule was another tiny little chain rule. So you could see that, you know, this could nest infinitely, infinitely deep. And, you know, every step you do could introduce, maybe there's a chain rule here, maybe there's a product rule, maybe there's a chain uh, quotient rule, right? So, you know, the more of these you do, you see the importance of careful bookkeeping right? Being very intentional about every step you write down, being really clear about 
okay, now I need to do a chain, now I need to do a quotient, and sort of not skipping too many steps. That way you don't confuse yourself, right? I think, you know, I've been doing this for a long time, and I wouldn't want to write much less than this, right? Even if I was doing it for myself, because I think doing less work than this, it'd be really easy to confuse yourself um, and into like, you know, thinking that you had a step done when it wasn't really done, or maybe you'd like sort of combine two things by accident. So I think it's really important to be methodical and intentional about every step you write. All right, so I hope this was helpful and hopefully you got the same answers I did. Uh, and if not, please let me know because maybe I made a mistake. Okay.